okay guys welcome back to another brand new video now uh, today well today we'll be talking about the ESP8266 chip and the upcoming videos I have so if you've already seen the title of this video you obviously know what this is going to be about but before we get into that I'll be showing you a little bit about the chip how you can obtain one and how you can have a chance to actually win one of these chips so Let's go ahead first and um, as you can see here, this is the ESP chip, so a little bit of what it can do. This chip pretty much can host a web server for your uh, PS4 exploit, so pretty much it cuts out the need for a computer or the need to connect to online services as this chip will be hosting your web server like locally on the chip. You just connect to it via Wi-Fi and the chip is powered by the PS4's USB port. So it's pretty pretty simple to use, pretty self-sustaining. I'll get more into that later into the video and I'll show you how to set this up and how to actually program it. You know, to show you now, make it easy. This chip can do pretty much everything you can do with um, like the normal web kit uh, exploit host. So, you know, our ZFS exploit host, he actually makes the software for this chip as well. So it can do anything that's in there. You can add your own custom payloads to it. Whatever you want to do, dump games, modify games, um, install homebrew, hen, whatever. This chip will do it. Now, um, if you guys want my one specifically, look, they're pretty cheap. They're like $10 on eBay, depending on where you buy it. So these are some of the ones that come up available. If you want the specific one that I use, this is the one that I'll be using. This is probably the best one there is out there. And uh, if you guys want a chance to win one of these chips, or if um, you're not con convinced that you fully want these yet, Stick around, watch all my videos, and make sure um, you check everything out. I might have something in there that interests you. And if you want a chance to win one of these, but you don't want to buy one, you should head over to PlayStation Hacks website, where uh, all you have to do is enter into this competition. So PlayStationHacks.xyz, I'll have a link in the description for this page. Uh, pretty much, I'll read it for you. So essentially, all you have to do is Photoshop the PlayStation Hacks emblem onto an image of something that resembles PlayStation in any way, shape or form. So as you can see, I've created mine here. I'm just going to enter into the competition now. I've already got one, but you know, why not enter into the competition? I suggest you guys do the same. So as you can see, I'll just write here is my submission. You need to uh, upload it to some image hosting website like imja.com, pretty easy. These guys host images for free. Um, so you click away on the whale, you don't want the whale, okay, go away. And then you click new post and just drag and drop the image into here. It'll create your post. As you can see, it's uploading it. Now this doesn't have to be public. As you can see, you've got post privacy, so it's hidden. So only people with the URL can see it, which is fine, and it's in. So we don't want any tags, we don't need any of that. So what you're going to do is right click on this, and you're going to go to open image in new tab. So there's our image. You're going to right click on that, copy image, and you're going to come back to where you're posting it, and just post it underneath. So there's my image, so I just went control paste and I pasted it and we're going to submit the reply and that's pretty much it guys that will enter you into the competition to win this chip and uh, yeah good luck if you guys want to win it and good luck if you guys are following my tutorials there's a couple entries in here already so um, wish you guys all the best and I'll get back to you in just a moment okay guys welcome back to another brand new video now in today's video I'll be answering one of the questions that one of you guys had for me so as you can see from the uh, actual description of the title in this video someone's asked me how to change the SSID name or the AP name for the Wi-Fi chip and uh, also how to connect to this via FTP so in today's video I'll be showing you just how to do that okay so what you're gonna need is really a computer that has Wi-Fi or a Wi-Fi USB dongle so that you can connect to the ESP chip. You'll also need um, a computer with a USB port so you can flash the ESP chip 
and you'll need to download the client filezilla so just type it in this is it here you can go to their main page and download it from there filezilla is a great FTP client it lets, uh, lets you do lots of great things uh, this will be used for that and uh, in today's tutorial and you'll also need a program called HXD so HXD is a hex editor this also works wonders very good tool so you guys can download this from their main page as well I think it's here as you can see HXD just go to their download section and download it from there here you are down here alright now um, back to what we're doing I'm gonna show you how to actually modify this so so if I go over here and um, I'll bring this over so you can see it now uh, as you can see I've got a couple bin files in here so I've got the original one and I've got two modified ones which I've modified recently so I'll show you how to modify your bin file so at the moment I've recently just flashed my ESP chip with the um, original firmware on it so that it shows you the correct addresses so I'll just wait for it to boot back up now and then I'll show you okay guys so as you can see I've just flashed my ESP chip and this is the uh, normal SSID that will come up or AP name whatever you want to call it so now I will show you how to modify that so that you can change the AP name so I'm just gonna make a backup of this which I don't really need to do but I'll just make a backup anyways um, this we're just gonna write original in case you guys ever want to but I also have the uh, original in the um, in the zip file here but it doesn't matter uh, you're gonna open up this uh, original bin file so what you need to do is you need to have HXD, HXD installed to do that uh, if it doesn't come up with the HXD emblem or if it opens it up in some other program just uh, try and open this with HXD you can probably open the program drag and drop it into it it'll work but um, once you open it up it should look like this now I'll show you guys something so if you press Control F and let's say you search for exploit host you'll see that there's uh, quite a few that come up there's about 13 or something so essentially what I had to do to find how to change this was I searched for every instance of exploit host in here and I found the one which uh, eventually worked for me so I would modify one at a time and find out which one changed the AP name so modify flash test modify flash test so on and so on and um, I've come up with the correct one now so if we're going to go to offset at uh, this value here so we go control G and go to offset 00056970 it'll take us to this line here so this is the line where you need where you can modify the name so this is the actual name for the AP so for example I'll name it something completely different so I'll name it zap whoops make sure that whenever you do this you click in front of the uh, the letter that you want to change because it will just um, automatically write over it if you delete anything you might like mess it up so don't do that if you make it delete it you could corrupt it so just you're only modifying what's already there so we're gonna do zap the man and then we're gonna do underscore actually now we'll just do apex you know what we'll, we'll actually do underscore apex like so and then you can see that we've got still ST there so um, because ST is still there we obviously don't want to leave that and you guys would think well we just put two dots because that's what the rest of it is well no don't do that you need to come over here so this is the um, value that you haven't changed yet which is the S and then the T here so what you do is you come and click here and you type 0 0 0 zero and as you can see it's just made them dots so that's no value in there which is what you want um, don't ever go past the letters that are already in here because if you do then 
once you go past it it'll corrupt it as I said because it's changing the length and when it's corrupted it won't work but this should work for you you can obviously make it shorter by um, doing less and then changing more to uh, the zeros over here on this side but you can't make it longer in this release unfortunately so I will show you guys that there is um, some other stuff in an update I'll put it on the screen now so as you can see in the screen on the update we've got the device config menu here which is what you access to uh, modify the current password and as you can see here this is the new configuration menu so instead of just being able to modify the password you can also modify the AP name as you can see it's come up here testing one two three so in a new one you'll be able to do this and in some other firmwares you can also do this but in this current version of the firmware you can't um, unfortunately I don't have this uh, this current version either this was just sent to me from the developer because I um, asked him to help me out with this and uh, he actually told me that he had this for the new firmware planned because uh, when I said to him you know I want to make a video and I want to show people how to modify it because I obviously found the offset and everything and I wanted his permission to show you guys since we're technically decompiling one of his uh, so one of his uh, firmwares he said yeah look it's fine but it's going to be in the new version so I told him well look I'll make the video and I'll show them just for now this will also work with uh, different firmwares as well if you guys want to try that but you'll have to use my trial and error method because I don't believe that they will have this at the same offset and uh, he's like yeah alright man and he sent me over the images just so I can show you guys what the new one will look like so get excited for that because that's coming soon and uh, now just to show you that this works I will save this so you come up here and press save now we will go back to here which is the file that we've now modified as you can see it made a dot back file so it automatically does that for you so it copies the original file and uh, makes a dot back so that when if something goes wrong with the edited file you can just delete the dot back and you'll have a, a brand new um, well I mean it'll be the same file anyways so that's saved now so we're going to open up the node MCU flasher like so and uh, you guys have already seen me do this in my other video you've seen how I do it so I'm just going to run through it again on the screen quickly it'll, it won't take too long okay so now that you can see that this is done what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait about five seconds and then you're gonna unplug the chip trust me you want to do this because if you don't do this it could cause uh, problems with the chip especially since we changed the ESP name so once you've unplugged it you want to wait maybe 10 seconds and then you can plug it back in now if you're looking at your chip when you plug it in you should see it flash a couple times and then if you wait a little bit longer the uh, light will come on steady blue once that comes on that means you're ready to go so I'll close this now and I'll show you the new Wi-Fi network so we I don't remember what we wrote what did we write we wrote zap demand underscore apex so now if we check in here you should be able to see it come up there it is zap demand underscore apex so as you can see it has worked now we'll connect to the network so the password is ps 4 e uh, sorry xp oops i think i'm using caps it's ps4 xploit and then as you can see here i haven't changed that so press next press no and just wait for it to search so i find that sometimes it, it takes a while and says it's connecting but it's already connected so if you close it and open it back up again you can see it's connected so we'll close it again and um, now someone asked me how to do FTP to this thing so you're gonna open up FileZilla like so and I'm gonna just put this over here now what you wanna do is you're gonna go to this part here and you're going to click open site manager so you're going to make a new site so I've already done mine but I'll show you anyways so I'm just going to name it ESP tutorial you can name yours whatever you want 
and then click here to save the name now for the host you're going to want to populate it with the following details so if we come back to his page here his release page you can see the IP address so you're going to want to copy that and paste it into here the port is 21 uh, for the encryption you need to choose only use plain FTP and it says insecure in brackets that's fine you're only using it for this one then you're going to go to login type and click normal so now that you can put a username and password so we'll go back to here so the username is ps4 exploit and the password is ps4 exploit same as the uh, the Wi-Fi password so we'll type it in here PS4 exploit and we'll just copy and paste it in there and now once that's done you're going to go to the transfer settings tab and click limit number of simultaneous connections and press connect so as you can see its directory has been listed successfully and you can scroll through and look at everything that's in there so you have access to change anything you need to change Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys go thank uh, go thank Codemaster for this tool. This is a great tool. Uh, this will also work for other ESP chips that support such a function, but you just want to check to make sure you're entering the right credentials because they might have a different username as password for the, uh, for the exploit chip and they also might have a different IP address. So I'll leave that to you guys to figure out. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment down below and I'll see what I can do for you guys. Catch you all in the next video. Peace out.